Good morning. What's the best way to communicate? Today we're looking at 2 John. We're in the last two verses, 12 and 13. Having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of your elect sister greet you. Amen. So that's the end of the second epistle of John. Let's look at this last piece. We're very thankful for all the pages of Scripture. To, to think that God would reveal his truth and put it in this form for us, it's, it's quite a gift from heaven. He preserved it for us. It, it's been just absolutely crucial for the church, and, and it's crucial today. It's not going to stop being crucial until we're in the kingdom. So this is the baseline. But it's still true that there's nothing out there that can replace face-to-face -face communication. This was preserved. It's blessed the church. It was God's plan. Thank God for it. But when it comes to a lot of our communication, face-to-face -face is, is not matchable. We need to talk face-to-face. -face. You know, we're doing a lot of this uh, stuff today with, with Zoom and different kinds of uh, internet communication. And uh, it's, a, it's a good supplement for regular worship, but it's, it's not church. So we just are glad for what we have there. We'll use it. Uh, it will add to what we're doing, but it, it certainly is not the whole thing. We need to be face-to-face. -face. We need to gather in one place. And so that's the plan of God. John wants their joy to be full, and so because of the greatness of the danger he's addressed in this epistle, he went ahead and wrote to them and had somebody actually hand deliver the thing. So this, this has its place, and uh, thank goodness for it. Now another thing that's interesting, we have another clue here at the end that this, this business here about who this was sent to, the elect lady, we can tell this is congregation to congregation. Notice again what he said at the end, the children of your elect sister greet you that sounds like one congregation greeting another sister congregation. And so it all fits together rather quite well there. This is, this, this is what was going on. These congregations, these churches were in a, a sisterhood of churches, and they communicated this way. So this was God's plan. John wrote the letter to help resist the inroads of the Antichrist teachings. The church was young, and these warnings from the John, the last living apostle perhaps, invaluable to the church. So we're glad for those. And you know what? They're for us today. We, we need them today, uh, perhaps even more, if that's possible. The church today is not a lot stronger. In many ways, there have been many cultural pieces that have come in, and the churches tend to be very weak. So again, we go back to the Bible, back to the Bible. And as we do that, God will prosper his children, prosper his sisterhood of churches. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we have been interested in the second epistle of John. John is decidedly against antichrists who are deceivers. All antichrists are deceivers. And so, Lord, help the churches. Help our churches today. Help us to heed the counsel of John these 2,000 or so years ago. Help us to be especially careful in teachings of, about the atonement and the humanity of Jesus, the deity of Jesus. Help us to be very careful that we're tracking there with the Bible rather than with scholarship or whatever dogmas have been erected by different groups. Lord, bless your people. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. May God help us take a proper line today against deceivers and antichrists. Help us to be right about the atonement. Help us to take a careful look at what Jesus' incarnation is, doctrines of atonement, of what sin is, and those things. Those will help the church to get things right in these last moments in history. So we're finished up here with 2 John. I want to invite you to come back tomorrow morning. And we're going to go back now to the Old Testament, the Tanakh, the, uh, the Law of the Prophets and the Writings. And we're going to look at one of the uh, larger books in the Old Testament. We're going to look at the weeping prophet, Jeremiah. So join me here tomorrow morning as we go back to Jeremiah chapter 1. And you can read ahead. We'll look at the first three verses. God be with you today.